If it's from Nintendo, chances are Mario is heading the title, or at least somewhere close to the lead role. He's done everything from exploring castles, resorts, and galaxies to being a doctor? Yes, the world is no stranger to the red and blue clad plumber, but often forgotten in all the stardom is the other half of the dynamic duo, Luigi! Yahoo! Well, Nintendo realized how badly they were neglecting Green Mario and decided to do something about it. They gave him a mansion! Full of... ghosts. <laughs> That's right! We're discussing the sequel to the Luigi game that changed Nintendo as we know it. Mario is miss- Wait, no, I mean Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. Luigi's Mansion came out as a launch title for the GameCube, and while it's not the Mario title everyone was hoping for, I really enjoyed this game. It not only gave the man in green his own time to shine, but it had some great atmosphere, cool visuals, and really, really sucked. Ghost up with a vacuum! <laughs> I wasn't alone, as many people were looking forward to a sequel, and they didn't have to wait long. Fast forward to 2013, Nintendo has decided to make up for all the neglect they've given Luigi and began what would be known as the Year of Luigi. To commemorate the experience, they released several titles like Super Luigi U, Dr. Luigi, and most importantly, Luigi's Mansion 2 or Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, as it was known in the States. Finally, we got the sequel we'd been looking for. I eagerly got my copy of the game, unboxed it, popped it in my 3DS, and, uh, I didn't like it. I remember being visibly frustrated when playing the handheld title, and even got to a point where I rage quit on a certain boss, never to touch the game again. To me, it had changed too much from the original for me to enjoy it, and instead, I waited a little bit longer for Luigi's Mansion 3 years later, which, by the way, is my favorite to this day. However, we aren't talking about the third installment, as we now have the option to play the second game on the Switch with Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. No Dark Moon in the title, huh? With this, they promised the game with enhanced HD visuals and a $60 price tag. Oh boy! That combined with my feelings of the original game kind of had me dreading revisiting this game in the first place. But I made a video about this game, and you're watching it, which I thank you for, and I have a lot to say. And who knows, maybe my opinion of Luigi's Mansion 2 has changed over the years with the remaster. So, is Luigi's Mansion 2 HD better than I remember, or does it suck just as much as the vacuum I use to catch ghosts? Let's find out. It starts with Professor E. Gad in Evershade Valley. Bonding with ghosts? Yeah, that's weird. They seem to be at peace due to the dark moon in the sky, something about it controlling them. I don't know, but they have pupils, and that's weird. However, that peace doesn't last long, as King Boo uses his powerful crown to break the dark moon into multiple pieces, causing the ghost to go crazy. Oh god, you know it's bad when they lost their pupils! Wait, ghosts have eyes? Egad recruits Luigi to join him on his quest to save Evershade Valley. And by recruit, I mean force. And by force, I mean pull him through the television of his own home to teleport him to Evershade Valley. Luigi, <laughs> what's going on? Hopping Adam Boy. Uh, why are you on my TV? I need you to fight some ghosts. Can I change the channel? I'm on every channel. But I don't want to. All right, in you go. No! Unlike the first game, there's nothing voluntary here. Luigi's not trying to save his brother like in the first one, or his friends in the third one. Egad knows who to call and straight up kidnaps Luigi. Look at Luigi! He doesn't want to be here! He just wants to watch the latest episode of All My Plumbers and Days of Our Toilets! Also, does Egad seem a bit more reckless to anybody else? They leaned way harder into the mad scientist stereotype. I kinda like it. He just uses Luigi as a guinea pig for all his ghost hunting experiments. Combine this with Luigi's turmoil and honestly, it's hilarious. Untested teleporter? Luigi doesn't get paid enough. Luigi must go across multiple mansions with the new Poltergust 5000, an updated vacuum with some new features for combating ghosts. This machine can do a lot more than sucking and blowing. Yeah. <laughs>
It didn't work. New upgrades have been added like the strobe bulb, a flashlight that you can charge up that stuns the ghost. Say cheese, paranormal pranksters! In fact, unlike the first game where you just flash a light at them and you're ready to suck, you have to stun them to catch ghosts off guard. There's also a meter that once filled up allows basically an ultra suck that really takes out their health. Do ghosts have health? Once they're down to zero, they go yoink right into the Poltergust 5000. Rinse and repeat many, many times. I like the way ghost catching is done in this game. Not that the first game was boring, but this game shows how ghost hunting has evolved, making it more advanced and challenging. Plus, there's no poison mushrooms to stop me from getting a good score. You also get the dark light, a setting in your flashlight that exposes hidden objects that were turned invisible by ghosts. Each revealed object causes orbs to appear, which you have to, you guessed it, suck up so the mansion's furniture can reappear. Probably with ghosts in them. It's a new and creative way to explore and solve puzzles. I can't tell you the amount of times I thought I was stuck, only to find one of these hidden items and it gets things rolling again. Lastly, the Poltergust 5000 isn't the only new evolution in ghost hunting regalia. The Game Boy Horror gets a glow up as well, not only being your map like the original, but this time being a DS. The DS stands for Dual Scream, complete with a cool ringtone. <laughs> So with all his gear ready, Luigi is off to the mansion. Or should I say, mansions. Unlike the first game where you explore each floor of one mansion, you explore a variety of mansions. There's the gloomy mansion, a classic setting of the haunted variety, haunted towers, a huge manor full of plants, some of them in the man-eating variety, old clockworks, an abandoned clock tower filled with ruins, bitterly cold underground mine, and other things I can't mention because spoilers. You have to select missions for each mansion, usually having you advance further into the large house, finding items or completing certain tasks. Other missions have you catching certain ghosts, rescuing toads, and getting your stuff stolen by Polterpup. We'll get to him later. And I'm not the biggest fan of the mission structure if I'm being honest. I've always loved seeing the mansion or hotel change over time in the previous games. And while you do get some of that in the mansion levels, each mission you see things evolve and change, like more plants and vines in the haunted towers, or more snow inside and outside of the secret mine. But that's really it? There's no particular place in this game that I'm really attached to. Maybe because these are places Luigi is visiting and not his own mansion? I mean, he didn't have to win it in a contest for me to like it, but still. Not only that, but going from place to place, mission to mission, really disrupts the flow of this game for me. Especially since some of these missions feel so dragged out. I understand why it's like this for gameplay reasons, but a part of me wishes it was just like one or three, where I just went into one mansion and explored the whole time, or I went into a hotel where I went up a bunch of floors, not having to go back and forth to EGAD's lab all the time. It really feels like they stretched out some of these missions just to pad the runtime. Don't get me wrong, some missions are fine, but usually that involves exploring the creepy mansion with creepy ghosts. Otherwise, padding. But hey, you could still get rich. At least in the mansion, you could still collect lots and lots of money. Luigi's Mansion sure has a way of making Luigi roll in the dough. Sure, it's normal for the Mario Bros to collect coins, but there are also dollar bills, gold bars, even gems are now collectibles in each mansion. Unlike the first game where you use your fortune to fund Luigi's real estate, all your treasure is used to upgrade your ghost gear and make it stronger so dealing with powerful ghosts is much easier. It makes sense and gives you a solid reason to collect treasure. It works! All right, all right. Let's talk about the most controversial thing in Luigi's Mansion 2. The ghosts. There are classic green ghosts, angry red ghosts, Hiding Prankster's Blue Ghosts, Goopy Trap You and Jello Purple Ghosts, and the Large Boy Yellow Ghosts, who are the worst thing ever in this game. I remember even back in 2013, there was a decent amount of grumbling with the new ghosts, especially compared to the portrait ghosts of the first game. Instead of full-fledged ghost characters, 
these new ghosts were simpler in design and a lot less complex. A lot of people didn't like them. No, sir, didn't like it. But if I can disagree with the majority here, I kind of like these ghosts. Okay, give me out, give me out. Okay, the portrait ghosts in the original are obviously better, but I do think these are better than the grunt ghosts from the original. Sure, they show up a lot, but so did the basic ghosts in the original. Plus, you do see these new ghosts do more things. They interact with the environment, hide in the furniture. They'll show cutscenes where they mess around with each other, get into fights, and just overall have more personality than the grunts in the original game. But I still get why people aren't a fan of them. The portrait ghosts were just so memorable and iconic. And not to have any of them at all, and just have the boss ghost be the same ghost possessing different things every time is a bit disappointing. But despite saying that, the bosses are okay. It would be cool if it was a different ghost, but being able to possess different things like a spider, stairs, a clockwork tower, and more adds some variety. But then again, I keep thinking of fighting Chauncey in the original, which was a lot more entertaining and visually pleasing. Not to say, there aren't some memorable ghosts in this one, because here we get the introduction of Polter Pup. This adorable dog ghost, which is really sad to think about, oh God, doesn't even want to fight Luigi. Just play with him and steal his items. Don't be mad, Luigi. This is just one big game of fetch, that's all. Basically one of the varieties of missions we have in this game. And it's a fine deviation if you ask me, but also even if it wasn't, Look at him! He's so cute! He's a dog, and I'm a sucker for dogs! Rory, if you die and decide to haunt me for the rest of my remaining life, you are more than welcome to steal my stuff. Oh yeah, the boos are back in this game too, and they're just kind of there. When you use your dark light to reveal furniture, sometimes a boo will be there. Shine your dark light at the boo to stun them, suck on their tongue, and they bounce around like a beach ball. I have to say it's a lot easier and quicker than the first game, where you would literally go from room to room trying to whittle at the HP of these suckers. Do ghosts have HP? I still don't know the answer to this question. So this is technically an improvement. Plus, I found a lot of them just from playing normally, which is one more quality of life change from the first game. While Luigi's Mansion 2 had improvements from the first game, the HD version has the improvement of better visuals. And that's it. When it comes to fancy things with the remaster, this game clearly sucks. Get it? Cause it's high definition. It's just everything you got on the 3DS, but now on the Switch with a slight upgrade in the graphics. It's fine, but is it $60 fine? I'm not so sure. It's just a straight port, and I feel they could have done a lot more to make the sale worth it. Don't get me wrong, I do like the details, and seeing these levels on a big screen for once does add to the atmosphere, but it's not enough. Maybe add new levels or bonus challenges, heck, even some concept art. Why not? Do something. But no, it's just the game from the 3DS to the Switch, or better, or worse. One thing I'm glad that hasn't changed, however, is the music. It may be my favorite thing about the main mode of Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. The music does an amazing job of getting you in the mood for whatever Luigi is about to face. Each score fits the level perfectly, and I love the unease when you interact with rooms filled with ghosts, or how the music is different depending on whether you are inside or outside. Some of these tracks are so catchy and memorable, I instantly remember them years later, and especially that motif of the Luigi's Mansion theme. They use the same melody, but they do whatever they can to make it not only sound different, but also fit every environment. This is arguably my favorite part about the game, and I enjoy just listening to the soundtrack off stream, especially that dang ringtone. However, even with a kicking soundtrack, I don't think I like this game that much. I never finished the original 3DS version back in the day, and while I finally did finish the Switch version, I can't say it wasn't frustrating. It has some great things going on, but when it comes to these little annoyances, 
a lot of things got to me. Like the controls for Luigi felt a bit stiff at points, especially with turning. I don't know if it was drift or if the tank controls just didn't feel as fluid as before. A lot of times, ghosts will try to hit you and you'll have to dodge, which is a problem because the ghosts can take you all over the place and it's hard to avoid getting punched by those ectoplasmic hands. Sure, you can jump to dodge, but that sends your ghost catching meter all the way down to zero. So either way, it's going to take you forever to catch large groups of ghosts. Also, this game does not hold your hand. A lot of times you just go into the mansion and the game's like, all right, figure it out. It really feels like EGAD is just throwing you into the wolves. There were so many times I was stuck on what to do and where to go. And the game really didn't do much to help me out with it. Even just finding the poltergust itself in the beginning, I had trouble doing. And it's not just me. I know a lot of people who struggled and didn't know where to go either. There's a difference between challenge and just leaving you to not know what you're doing. But by far the most annoying thing is when you die and you have to start the mission all over again. That's right, no checkpoints, no save points. You die and start the whole mission all over again, no matter how long it is. The only way you will save yourself is if you happen to find a dog bone, which you can get by collecting a certain amount of treasure, which isn't always possible depending on the mission. As much as I love that pup, it could still be aggravating to not get the second chance. Some of these missions are so long, they could have added checkpoints when remastering this game. Why didn't they? Why did they leave the game alone, both the good and the bad? It really irritates me to no end, and it's the reason I can't really get into the main game as much as I want to. However, Luigi's Mansion 2 does have a mode I do enjoy. Scare Scraper. This game has multiplayer, and a really fun one at that. You and your friends go up floor to floor completing certain tasks. Scare Scraper has multiple modes. Hunter, where you hunt ghosts. Find the exit, where you search for the exit before the time runs out. Polter Pup, where you find a bunch of different polter pups and catch them. And Surprise Mode, which combines elements from them all. Every five floors, you face a boss ghost until you reach the top of the fifth floor, 10th floor, 25th floor, or even endless, where there is no top floor. Whether you are playing with friends or a bunch of random people, it can be addicting to see how far you can go. It's also entertaining because you can also sabotage your teammates. You can steal ghosts they're catching mid-suck. You can run into them and make them trip and drop their keys and other items. You can even hunt to find the most coins at the end. And while you can work together, there's still a competitive nature to it. You could just steal all the coins if you really want to. I've spent a few hours playing Scarescraper, and with the right crew, it's a real blast. Even by yourself, it's a fun time. Not to mention, all your treasure can be used to help increase your upgrades, and ghosts can be collected in the vault. Oh yeah, I forgot to bring up the vault, didn't I? You collect ghosts throughout your journey and Scarescraper, where you can learn about the ghosts you catch. They each have fun little descriptions as if written by EGAD himself. It's all the little details that are nice. Plus the Scarescraper ghost designs are a lot of fun too. Those who complained about bland looking ghosts have never played Scarescraper as really the best and most creative designs are here. Or at least the alternates are. Huh, that was a nice surprise. While I wasn't a fan of the main game, there still was a mode I could enjoy. Still, while it is great, I don't know if Scarescraper is enough to save the game for me. Luigi's Mansion 2 HD is my least favorite of the trilogy by far. While it did a lot to evolve the series with tools and game mechanics, I do not like the mission styles, it lacks quality of life features, and it can be frustrating. I feel Scarescraper mode is a lot of fun, but I'd be stretching the truth if I told you that mode was worth the $60. It's a blast, but not worth the expense and the HD polish isn't enough to make it worth the pennies either. I wanted to give this game another chance, and while the multiplayer was a nice surprise and there are good things about it, everything else was as suspected or worse. It's not a bad game, it's really good in fact. It's just not my cup of ectoplasm. But if you love Luigi's adventures on huge haunted properties, Luigi's Mansion 2 HD might be worth checking out, although I heavily advise waiting for a sale. 
While it wasn't able to be my game of the year, or probably even make the top 10, here's hoping the release of Luigi's Mansion 2 HD is enough to lift your spirits. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If you like what you saw, hit the like button, leave a comment, and be sure to check out my other videos too. Special thanks to all the people who helped me out in this video. I couldn't have done it without all of you. Also, an extra special thanks to my Patreon patrons, including Mantle Ferox and Savacom. You help make every video possible, and you all mean so much to me. If you'd like to join our Patreon, the link is in the description below, along with my Twitch and Instagram. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a good night.